Thank you very much, dear, dear Sylvia. Um, Ambassador Kukuli, good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is indeed a great privilege and pleasure for me to speak to you on the occasion of this very important event. But my, my first task is uh, specifically to bring to you, Ambassador, the very good wishes of my minister, His Excellency Dr. Blayton Zimandi, South Africa's Minister for Higher Education, Science and Innovation, who would very much would have liked to be with us today. But unfortunately, urgent government business means he's outside of the province of Gauteng today. But he continues to follow very closely our collaboration between South Africa and Italy, because he attaches high importance to this partnership, as you and him had actually discussed when we had the privilege of hosting the ambassador at South Africa's site for the Square Kilometre Array radio telescope earlier this year. And later, I'll say a few more words on the, the Square Kilometre Array. Um, when I say it's a, it's a privilege uh, and a pleasure, that, that, that is really an affirmation of how aligned today's proceedings and tomorrow's proceedings, this event, is with the strategic priorities of the South African government in, in science, technology and innovation. What we will be discussing, what we'll be working together on with corresponds directly to the national priorities we've set, and it reinforces our international cooperation and the ability to leverage science to reinforce global solidarity, which, which are all strategic priorities for our government. Um, needless to say, much will be said during the coming days about the COVID-19 pandemic and its socioeconomic consequences and how science and innovation must uh, respond to that. And that's indeed also, I think, one of the reasons which has brought us together here to see how do we best mobilize the resources of science, technology and innovation. In South Africa, um, we have our president at launch at the end of, of last year, what we call South Africa's Economic Recovery and Reconstruction Program, which is a deliberate attempt to seek how do we reinvigorate economic growth in South Africa to speak specifically to our challenges of unemployment, inequality and poverty, which existed before COVID-19, but of course have been much, made much worse by COVID-19. And very important for the purpose of our discussion here is that innovation, skills development and entrepreneurship are key components of that plan. And the plan specifically referenced the importance for South Africa to invest in disruptive technologies, such as big data, such as artificial intelligence, applications such as the Internet of Things, uh, precision medicine, etc. And of course, this is what we will be discussing uh, to, to, together here. So that's why also my minister, when we presented the program for him, said, but this is what we've asked you to do. So Ambassador, thank you very much for allowing us to directly respond to what is a key priority for, for the government. But as our friends, uh, Pierre Guidou, and, and uh, who I should acknowledge, and we continue to be uh, greatly appreciative of the outstanding work the, the Italian Embassy is doing in supporting our, our, our partnership effort. No, but these are also very exciting times for science, technology, policy development in South Africa. Colleagues may know that about two years ago, our government had adopted a new white paper on science, technology and innovation, which sets the strategic direction for science and innovation for South Africa for the next um, 20 years. But to implement that plan, we are currently finalizing a decadal plan, a 10-year plan. And then the point I wanted to emphasize also for the purpose of, of this discussion, it's not a decadal plan for the Department of Science and Innovation. It's not even a decadal plan only for the South African government. It is a decadal plan for the whole of South Africa. Because we are very cognizant that if we're going to unleash the potential of science, technology and innovation in South Africa to achieve its optimal potential, we need to draw on the resources, the capacities and the contributions of all. Of the government laboratories, such as the CSIR, where we're located here, and our Center for High Performance Computing, for example, of our universities, but also from entrepreneurs, from grassroots innovators, from the, from the private sector. And I would really like to congratulate the organizers of this, these two events who have really brought together all these different constituents of the South African National System of Innovation. And exactly, this is exactly what we want to, 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 to seek, seek, seek to achieve. So this is really almost like a blueprint for the type of partnerships we would like to foster in the future. And in that decadal plan, international cooperation is emphasized because South Africa, like Italy very much, know that throughout history, throughout the centuries, science and innovation has always progressed by working together, by sharing experience, expertise, uh, resources. And let me uh, acknowledge again the long-standing commitment and contribution from the Italian government over many decades 
to reinforcing scientific capability in the developing world. Um, as some of you may be aware, that it's because of the very generous support of the Italian government that institutions such as the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology, which has a campus in Cape Town, or the International Center for Theoretical Phys Physics, or the World Academy of Sciences, uh, continue to make important contributions to global science. They're all located in the beautiful city of Trieste in Italy, uh, and con but really, really, uh, Italian Italy's support for that for that that effort continues to to benefit not only South African but 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 African science. So today's and tomorrow's proceedings really provides us with an additional opportunity to reinforce the strategic partnership between South Africa and Italy. We have an excellent bilateral cooperation program. We're about to to embark on a new bilateral round of joint funding of R and D. We work together successfully in in various multilateral programs such as the European Union. And the agreement, which will be signed later by the by the International Foundation and, and our National in, um, Integrated Cyber Infrastructure System, will complement those existing existing partnerships. And I would like to already pledge the the full support from the Department of Science and Innovation for this new collaboration. And we will be be looking very eagerly to see how we can can use this opportunity provided. It also, I said, I'll say a few more words about the Square Kilometer Array Radio Telescope which of course, as, as many in the room will know, will be the world's largest radio telescope. It will be located in South Africa and, in, and, and um, Australia. And Italy has been one of the pioneering partners in the Square Kilometer uh, Array Telescope. And of course, for those familiar with the domain of radio astronomy, what is radio astronomy? It's actually, a, it's actually all about big data. So again, we also see very exciting linkages between the collaboration we will discuss over the, the next two days and our joint efforts with, with, with regard to the, the square kilometer array. But again, as I want to emphasize, what we are doing is to see how do we mobilize science to respond to the key societal challenges, whether it's in the public health, in the environmental protection, or in, in the security domains. I think then just to, to conclude, Ambassador, um, ladies and gentlemen, we often speak these days in, in, in the science policy world of what people refer to as science diplomacy. And, and I, I would really like to, it's, there's, these are no shallow words to say that what we are doing here and our partnerships with Italy is really best practice example of science diplomacy in practice. Because what is science diplomacy? It is how do we use instruments of international cooperation, international relations to support the progress of science. And here with our friends in Italy, with the Italian government, we're constantly designing or enabling new partnerships such as we are doing today. But it's also how do we use science to respond to the shared global challenges we all share, climate change, energy security, food security. But perhaps then most important, it's to draw on that unique ability of science, which is a universal language, which knows no frontiers to bring people together. Whether we're continents apart, whether we speak through Zoom or Teams or whatever platform, irrespective of our nationality, our color, our creed, it, it underlines our common humanity and our common destiny and uh, our conviction that it is, it is through science we have the, the opportunity to work together for that greater global, global good for all. So with, with those few words, let me again just thank um, the Italian Embassy, specifically Dr. Sarti, for his ongoing uh, outstanding friendship and support to South Africa, but also the South African colleagues, Dr. Happy Sotole, who will speak later, who is one of South Africa's eminent science, science diplomats and the whole team at, at NICAS uh, for, for their efforts in putting this, this program together. And as I said, we will, this is not only an MOU which will be signed, it is the foundation for what we believe will be a real and concrete partnership. And we certainly look forward from the Department of Science Innovation's perspective to see how we can support that cooperation. So thank you very much.